have the privilege to start with Mr. Majoud. Mr. Majoud, you have extensive experience in uh, uh, telecommunication and online media. And uh, my question is uh, the following. Uh, I will ask you the question in French, and uh, you are the freedom to, to, to be, I uh, know you, you speak so many languages, so you have the freedom to speak in French or in English. Quels sont d'après vous les avantages et les inconvénients de l'utilisation des réseaux sociaux Et bien entendu, est-ce qu'on peut utiliser ces réseaux sociaux au-delà de, des objectifs de la révolution Et je pense qu que dans les pays arabes, et surtout au Moyen-Orient, et précisément au Liban, il y a des expériences et des initiatives réussies dans ce sens. Et je voudrais, je voudrais aussi euh, parler du fait que euh, dans les réseaux sociaux, il y a un certain nombre de partages d'informations et on ne parle plus de la territorialité de la territorialité de l'information, donc il euh, n'y a pas de frontières d'information et il euh, n'y a pas vraiment euh, un vrai contrôle entre parenthèses euh, de l'information qui est circulée sur Internet. Donc euh, on n'a pas vraiment euh, des moyens pour vérifier euh, les sources d'information, la crédibilité euh, de l'information. Il y a aussi euh, les, les internautes et les utilisateurs en général utilisent un jargon qui euh, résulte euh, d'une manière ou d'une autre euh, à la euh, diffusion de, de, de ce qu'on appelle le discours de la haine euh, sur Internet. Donc, euh, d'après votre expérience, on aimerait bien euh, parler euh, et discuter la, la question principale est-ce que l'espace Internet est un espace de non-droit Thank you very much, uh, Karima. This is not a question anymore, it's a very long debate by, by itself, but nevertheless all the points you are raising are indeed very, very important. And I would like to start by the first aspect which you are discussing, uh, which is also quite, uh, quite important because we tend all to speak about the Arab Spring and the role that social media play in the Arab Spring, which is very important. Uh, but we keep on highlighting this and this, and there are extensive examples being done, and I believe we knew uh, enough about it. But we speak much less about what's being done in times of peace or for things other than revolution for the youth in social media. This is why I wanted to, to briefly mention from, uh, as, a, as a small testimonial from my own experience also with what's being done with the officials, uh, with a former minister and with a, with a current, current minister to give uh, an example. For instance, I have the, the honor to serve, as mentioned by the, uh, my friend uh, Karima, as an advisor to the former uh, Minister of uh, Telecoms in Lebanon, uh, Nicolas Sahnawi, and we had a very extensive uh, social media experience uh, uh, together. Uh, it started from, I mean, I remember when the minister got his portfolio, and he had a few, uh, maybe a couple of hundreds of followers uh, on Twitter. Today he has more than 40,000 uh, followers. But it's not the more, what's more, much more important is not the number of followers, it's that these were all engaged citizens, that every single citizen started suggesting a dream he had in telecommunication, whether to have a, 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 an ecosystem of uh, mobile internet, uh, whether that he's an entrepreneur, how can the government help him, etc., etc. And actions were taken, so it's, it, started, it became a fantastic platform of interaction where every citizen suddenly uh, felt engaged. So this created a whole new system where, uh, in a positive sense, uh, people started engaging more with uh, a government official and started the young, the young today start, started that feeling even employment opportunities were created because of that. And that, I believe, is, is a tremendous uh, thing. Today also we have a similar thing happening, I mean, uh, also in government with the uh, current uh, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. I can, quote, uh, I can give an example also uh, Mr. Jokar Basi, who is currently the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Lebanon, also uh, he has close to 40,000 followers on Twitter and he's engaging the citizen by showing uh, the, the Lebanese, uh, the countries visited, what do you suggest to talk, to talk to this and this official. So suddenly the citizen feels as if Lebanon is a superpower in foreign affairs and he can voice out, uh, the young of today can voice out, oh, maybe I would like to suggest this and this in foreign affairs. So this is something which we tend to to think maybe much less that to bridge the gap because we tend to think okay government is something government will never listen to us young people and uh, we are different we have our own but why don't we join efforts and i believe this is something also which you try in morocco Karima, you, I, I think you have extensive experience with that 
so that the, un the government can understand more what the young people of today want. And the young people of today, when the government listens to them, they don't feel marginalized anymore. They, they feel part of that, uh, of that decision. They become decision makers uh, themselves by proxy. And this is, I, I believe, a very interesting experience which we can extrapolate yeah. to, to other countries. Yeah. So you, you, you mentioned a very important um, aspect of the dialogue in the sense that uh, here, what you, what, what you say is that uh, social media is, uh, or online media in general, is a very, very good tool that governments themselves should harness this opportunity of the use of social media to bring to bridge the gap between Absolutely. citizens, and, you know, uh, citizens and, 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 and the government in a very, very positive sense that um, the citizens would feel that they are listened to, uh, that their um, uh, demands and aspirations are taken into account, and there is a really constructive dialogue instead of uh, young people going just to the streets and protesting and not finding an interlocutor. This is like an online and virtual space where it provides them with. Uh, uh, freedom uh, to connect and it lessens also the protocol of reaching uh, officials and on, in online media they can uh, reach them without any protocol or anything like that. Very and um, uh, my second question was related to uh, your experience as uh, an advisor to the Minister of Telecommunications.